Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Galactic Civilizations 4. Now, where we left off, we were considering some possibilities of going to war, and I still think that might be how we want to do things. I reckon the Archean Empire is a pretty easy target for us. And what, now, when I say easy, I don't mean like they're going to be a pushover, but I just mean like logistically, like they're right on my border. They are not that powerful. For example, if I go to the diplomacy screen, and I click on the Arcane Republic, uh, you can see here, militarily, their power is a little bit higher than ours, and their military power is a little bit higher than ours, but we can start to outproduce them a lot because we have massive manufacturing score over them. We also have a better research rate. Uh, we do have less population, but I do think that we can leverage our tech and production advantage to turn that into a real battle. Now, here's the problem is this faction is like the only faction in the world, galaxy that actually likes me, aside from like the Luxar Dominion, I guess. So I think I might actually give these guys a diplomat just to make them a little bit friendlier. It's good to have friends. Uh, the Archean Republic should have been my friend, um, but then they stole a world that I wanted. And so their entire civilization is forfeit. Uh, they also built like, I don't even know how to describe what they did over here, but they did something and it's like it has created an influence bubble. I think they built like a station or something. And that annoyed me also. And so I have decided to kill them. So we've got a commander ship here. We are building our very first fleet. We're going to finish this treasure hunt and then the CPUs will get built. The CPU BMM0 and a packet siege ship that will blow up a planet. I think I would like to recruit another. I think I would like to recruit another one of these ships. This one gives plus two fleet moves, so a high speed fleet would be quite good. We also have the Suffering Within, which gives beam attack. So I think someone with high resolve and attack would be good with this. Um, it's a frigate. Let's see. Oh, here we go. This guy is quite good. So I'm going to recruit you. Um, he's a little bit disloyal. Very low natural loyalty, but that's fine. I'm going to set him as the commander of the Suffering Within, uh, which will give this ship quite a bit of power. Um, and then this will be another fleet that we can use. And so when I come over here to Iconia, I don't know why that sound effect is so loud when you click on a ship. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but it's just like, it's painfully loud. You just have to live with that. That's unfortunate. But this is a 2 of 22. So I'm going to go ahead and recruit myself some more CPU M0s. My ship type, Logistics 6, so one to three of these. Oh, this is the wrong shipyard. Hold on. Uh, CPU M0, one, two, three. I may as well recruit them here anyway. I'll put them after the seed. We'll finish that seed ship. And then we'll build a packet seed ship as well to join that fleet. So it'll take me a little bit of time to build up these two fleets that I'm building. And I would like to have three fleets before I begin the war, I think. But we will get there pretty quick, I feel. Now, this is the Alva 1 sponsor. This planet, I'm a little bit more concerned with defending the planet. So I think what I would like to do is to get a constructor. Now, in order to get a constructor on Alva 1, I'm likely going to need population. So I'm going to prioritize manufacturing a pop here. And so before I do that, I'm probably going to build myself a supply ship just to make that manufacturing of population go faster because then I can build this supply ship. I'll be able to put down a space fortress, a spaceport fortress that will protect these two worlds from invasion while I'm at the war. We're, we're, we're kind of fortifying our position and uh, preparing ourselves for a battle. OK, let's have a look. So in the capital, we've got two progressives. Let's go ahead and board the non-progressive pop into the thing. Oh, we got some treasury. Lovely. Uh, we did just get planetary invasion. So we have the transport module. Um, which allows ships to invade planets. We could go for Xeno Reese or Xeno Mining, which would increase the yield of mines on my planets. Um, that could be quite good. I could also go for Stellar Marines, which give me soldiering, Unbroken Spirit, which would give me hit points. Um, I do like the idea of hit points on my ships, so I will go for that because we are preparing for a war. The more hit points we have, the less likely we are to lose a ship. The less likely we are to lose a ship, the more likely we are to continue winning. Let's see if we can't go get this settled. The class 26 amazing planet. I never would have thought that that was there. Kind of annoyed that I don't know. These were like showing up as like little dead worlds. So I don't know how or why these guys appeared. So I don't really have an explanation for that. We can show support for these guys. We'll lose a little bit of approval. We'll gain totalitarianism. I'm okay with gaining totalitarianism. Uh, when it comes to culture. Sorry, this is civilizational policy. Where's culture? Cultural progression. We have an 8% discount to totalitarianism, which is pretty good. Right now, we're f more focused on progressivism and only 12% of our population has progressive ideology. But that should hopefully be more as time goes on. Uh, we currently have 26 cultural points. In order to adopt another thing, we need 34. So we're, we're a few turns away from actually, you know, making some progress on that front. 
There's Unbroken Spirit. This will give us 15% hit points on our ships. Uh, let's see. Ooh, 20% evasion. There we go. I'll take that. That's awesome. So just helping our ships stay alive. Uh, better defenses, all that jazz. Here's our first combat ship has joined the fleet. Uh, now we're slowly building up the power here, right? We've got that nice hit points. we got a little bit of conquest rating. We got a little bit of combat rating. Actually, speaking of which, sea ships, um, transport protocol, pack of troops and vehicles built to invade unfriendly planets, useful during planetary invasions. Hmm. We'll see what we can do. We'll definitely want to have a fleet that's capable of invading planets. So the Archean Republic is demanding tribute from us, and we're going to go ahead and refuse that. Um, it's more evidence that we're going to be coming to blows. We did just get our 20% evasion buff. Here we go. Awesome. We can get weapon resistance now as well. Make our ships even better. So we're just getting stat buffs so that when the war inevitably comes, our ships will be in a really strong position to actually fight it. I'm a little bit confused as to how this... Like, I don't know where the, the border popping is coming from here, if that makes sense. Like, I don't see the station that's producing influence here. Whatever. Uh, let's talk to this station. I think it's good to get a mining barracks here. This will increase the rate at which we mine um, antimatter, and I'll get that twice. So now we're mining an insane amount of antimatter. And actually, speaking of which, there should be the mining base around my capital. Ah, it's already up to 0.4, so perfect. We colonize another planet right here, Dianova. It's a pretty damn good planet, actually. We may want to put a governor on it. There's the beam resistance that we were looking for. We can get beam attack. We could get Xeno Entertainment. This will give us access to the virtual world. We could upgrade our entertainment. We'd get access to entertainers, free media. We'd get more influence growth. We'd get 10 culture points. That would actually be really nice. Um, we could also get beam attack, exotic worlds, starbase. I think I'm going to go for Xeno Entertainment. It's a one-turn tech. Our attack rate is insane, which I'm very happy with. Ooh, looks like we've got a little alien fighters kind of hanging around here. And we might want to go clear out these pirates too, um, now that we've spotted them. We want to be careful with this colony ship. We want to micromanage. It looks like the Archean colony ship was killed, which means I can actually deploy this colony ship. Oh, wait, no, I need to wait for one of these pops to finish. They're quite expensive, these pops. Surprisingly so. Hyperdrive optimization for plus one move seems quite good, so we'll research that technology. And we have our very first warship coming out of the capital shipyard, which is excellent. I'm 55 production from that one. And then from this better shipyard, we've got 126. So quite a bit better over here at Zhang. Um, and then I think this Zhang fleet is complete. We're just waiting for the packet seed ship. Now, the packet seed ship actually doesn't have any military capabilities, right? Yeah, it just has like a little bit of health. Yeah, it's a seed ship, so it's not that strong, but we want to have a part, a part of the fleet anyway. Um, but we can start moving these guys out. So we're going to be going up against like the Ka fleet over here. They have, you know, 18 health, 5 attack, whereas you can play it or compared to mine, I have 150 health and 15 attack. And also that doesn't even take into account like the actual defenses of this fleet. Like if we, um, how do I show this? Yeah, here we go. So we've got like shield strength. We've got evasion. We've got pretty good evasion. We've got really good armor. Not so much shield. So we're kind of vulnerable to beam attacks, which I'm fine with. We're pretty strong across all other dimensions. Um, we are looking to trade with the Mantis. So they want to give me open borders, colonial bureaucracy, environmental engineering, quantum computing, political capital in exchange for starbase refinery, antimatter and credits. I can generate an insane amount of credits incredibly quickly. So I'm going to take this trade deal because it's so much science as well as open borders. So boom, they should be a little bit threatened by me. Now, I'm curious, since I've just built a fleet, how does the Archean Empire measure up against us? Because if there is a disparity, oh yeah, now we're way stronger than them just from building a single fleet, which totally tells me that we're way easily going to be able to beat them in this war. Now, and that's useful intel to be checking those numbers and how they shape up. Uh, we can get a Minister of Tourism. We can get a Minister of Culture. So do we have a good social leader here? Uh, low social, low social. We have two really high diligence leaders. So let's have a look. Anything that requires diligence. The Minister of Justice requires diligence. So I'm going to take the 11 diligence leader. I'm going to recruit him. And I'm going to make him my Minister of Justice. Boom. That's 11% crime reduced across my entire empire. Uh, now, crime mostly affects, well, it's kind of hard to show you what crime affects if a planet has no crime. Anyway, it just, I think it affects like certain yields and certain benefits. A prison would reduce crime. It also gives bonuses to military, which means I wouldn't mind putting it adjacent to the starport here. Would like to buff up the starport. Quite happy with it. We might want to get fusion power plants or even just more factories around it. But yeah, generally I want to build like cool things there. 67 science from this planet feels incredibly good, especially with, with two scientists churning away. Um, quite happy with that. Really high approval rating. Wouldn't mind getting my production up here a little bit, although I'm actually quite happy with the production that this planet is making. We should probably eventually scan the planet to see what happens when we do that. 
So I'll prioritize that. Um, but I will grow that pop first. And um, we are going to have to start thinking about where we're going to get money from. I think a lot of the money that we're going to get is going to come from doing treasure hunts. So I'll do like five turns of treasure hunts in here to try to, you know, refill my coffers. My coffers are a little bit empty right now. Now we are making good money, right? The trade route income is coming out nicely. The tax rates, you know, churning away. We've got really good approval. We could upgrade our research. Stellar Marines would give us soldiering. I'm going to try to one turn techs. And the idea behind one turning techs is that if you do a tech in one turn, it just helps you out. I'm going to get rid of experimental drives and remote piloting. I don't need a lot of movement. Instead, I would not mind a 15% manufacturing increase. Defensive measures gives us a lot of hit points. We're not, we're going to be going on the offensive, so I don't think that matters to me. Uh, land exploitation, land exploitation is just free for us. It'll just give us a lot of money. Um, genius grants is also fantastic. Although we could maybe drop genius grants. It doesn't seem that good. Research grants might be better. Oh yeah, I want that 20% ship. Shipyard stimulus, that's 20% production towards shipyards. That's useful. Hit points for ships. We've got tax exemptions. Loyalty isn't bad. Oh, just extra shield, armor, and evasion for all of our ships is amazing. And then I guess I will slot in research grants just to get that little bit of extra tech. And then I'm pretty happy with the setup. Um, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and colonize Ka-1. Hopefully this guy doesn't have the range to intercept us. He only has a range of two. He did manage to kill that Archean colony ship, which I'm very happy about. Interstellar cabinet is finished, so we just unlocked a whole bunch of new governor abilities. Uh, let's go for better missile weapons. We're going to, let's see here, the Festron Hunt has killed the mercenary of the independence. We have enough culture points to adopt a new trait. We could, could get a thousand research right now, or we could go for the Futurist. I like the idea of the Futurist. Let's do the Futurist. We've unlocked the Impossibility Engine, or the Possibility Engine. I don't know which one that is. Let's have a look. Uh, Virtual World Galactic Commission. The Possibility Engine. It gives you a 200% research bonus on this planet and plus three to adjacent researches. Uh, yeah, we should totally get that started. Well, we don't have to get it started right away. But one per civilization, that's going to be an amazing amount of research. That's also going to provide amazing adjacency bonuses. So this planet is just teched the hell out, uh, which I love. It's amazing. We got a trade here from the Melodyne. Uh, Xeno to biology and diplomacy in exchange for open borders, railguns, and hypersilicates. I don't have a use for hypersilicates, so I don't mind trading them. I will accept this trade deal. Remember, tech is king. The more tech I get, the better. Photonic alignment would be beam attack, planetary soil improvement, xeno mining. Um, I'll go for phot photonic alignment. I'm kind of focusing on one turn techs that especially biased towards one turn techs that improve my military. We did get a colonization event on Ka-1. So we could increase our equality awareness and get a collectivism trait discount. We would lose a tile. Uh, we can get totalitarianism, which ain't bad. Egalitarianism wouldn't be bad either. Uh, plus 5% approval. Approval is amazing. So let's go ahead and do the worm rodeo. Um, we also discovered new movers and shakers. I'm currently the most productive civ in the galaxy, which is to be expected when you're playing the Your Singularity. There's plus 10% beam attack. It's a fantastic technology. Let's research trade networks, basically as a way to re-roll. Our tech. Well, you know what? I'm going to go for computing substrates. Let's go for these one one turn techs are, are, the, are the play here. Okay, so we got ourselves Zhang 1, which is a class 22 world. It's got amazing production. It's got decent tech, which is quite surprising, but not completely unheard of. Uh, coordination beacon. This is one per civilization. It's good for influence. I'm not really going to be building influence here. I guess I technically could do that. We could influence growth. I might build this in the capital. The bureaucratic office would give us a small amount of control. It would also boost population and military. Uh, the beacon of Babylon, that's influence. The prison, there's not enough crime here to justify a prison. Uh, the shark tank doesn't seem necessary. The innovation complex is, oh, this is a one per planet that would give a bunch of research adjacency, which seems quite good to me. Especially if I were to build it on this tile and put a couple of more research things. Let's have a look. What else we got? The Xeno Anthropology Center is a one per civilization. Would give me influence growth as well as a diplomacy bonus. And just generally improve wealth and tourism and approval and influence. The Galactic Commission is a one per... Oh, culture points per turn. Now that's amazing. We could set up like a little influence triangle here. I'm not against that. So that would require a planetary conversion. Um, we'll build the Galactic Commission here on this tile because it'll give plus three influence. Then we can build a coordination beacon. So this would get me plus one culture point. This will get me plus one control. And then whatever I build on this planetary conversion tile, it'll be something that is influence based, like the Xeno Anthropology Center, which seems quite good to me, which is awesome. So we were setting up like a little, little culture district there. The Icos fleet. Uh, we finished the population manufacturing in Alva, which means the constructor will be coming out soon. 
that will be building the defense fortress around Alva. Awesome. Okay, so we are attacking these guys. We've got 16 attack. We basically got, we've got them. Um, total loss on their things. Now we can watch this battle. And it basically like automatically sort of creates a little auto battle that plays out, which I think is a really cool mechanic. I, I love that in games. You can see here, uh, this little front end ship looks like it took a bit of damage. And um, we're actually taking a surprising amount of damage here. But, oh yeah, look at that. That is some moida. We're probably going to have to lower the volume of this in post, but... Yeah, they got wrecked. We did take a decent amount of damage. It looked like, anyway. Okay, I guess not. Okay, the health bars were misleading. Maybe that was shielding that was taking damage. Um, but we basically eviscerated. We completely obliterated them. And here's the great thing. We just picked up experience... Uh, on these ships, how do I show? Yeah, you can see here, four out of eight, four out of eight, four out of eight. So as your ships level up, they will actually become even more powerful, which is fantastic. That's what you want, right? And so we're going to spend a little bit of time killing some space aliens, killing space pirates, you know, clearing out the, the galactic neighborhood. All right, we can upgrade our research. Let's choose a new tech. I will, I guess soil enhancement could be useful. This will be planetary soil upgrade as well as habitat improvement. This will allow us to continue to develop and increase the quality of our worlds. Um, speaking of worlds... If I go to leaders, I should have a planet that wants a governor. Ka, too, definitely wants a governor. So let me grab you. Can govern Ka, too. He gives 8% signs, 5% approval. Yeah, he seems quite good. And now if I go to Ka... Was it Ka 1 or Ka 2? Ka 1, I think it was, actually. Um, yeah, if I go to Ka 1, this is a very good science planet. Oh, yeah, look at all this tech. We've got good manufacturing. We've even got... Epimetheus pollen, which is great for food, not so much for anything else. But still, this if we rebuild this, we will actually get some benefits like the actual resource itself, which we can sell for money and stuff. Um, wealth, influence, wealth. Not so good a wealth planet. I mean, it's fine for wealth. I think what we're going to focus on in here is this is probably going to be a science world. Um, but then again, you don't have to follow what's on the tiles. It just makes the world slightly more efficient. We can totally just do whatever we want here. But I'm imagining like a huge carpet of like research districts like looping in and around like this and so we'll build like a little bit of manufacturing around the edges so these two tiles are going to be where they're built i might even destroy the epimetheus pollen although i do like to keep it so maybe we'll keep it so where's the city going to go i think we put the city on the mountains over here this is not going to have a very good starport but this is definitely a tech world so let's go ahead and build a core world do we have a good spot for it anywhere that gets boosted no so we'll just plant it over here it's a reasonable spot um, and then we're going to focus on things like the Colonial Generator, the Supply Depot. Uh, we'll get a Manufacturing District, Manufacturing District, Manufacturing District. Make sure we're getting just enough production to keep this you know, place going. And so this and this. So this can also be a factory here if we want it to be. Any production improvements we would put down... I'll just put a Manufacturing District here because these will all benefit from being adjacent to the capital and then adjacent to these things. So. I think this is reasonable. And eventually, I might replace this with a fusion power plant eventually. We'll see. Uh, but we just want to get the manufacturing up in this world. And I think that's a reasonable way to do it. Um, it does have its own like little, little colonies feeding it, which is awesome. we got a trade offer here. Resource extraction doctrine. Shipyard decay. Ooh. Okay, so that's what I'm giving to them. They want to give me energy deflection theory, trade networks, and Prometheon. I actually don't make much Prometheon. So this is a fantastic trade deal for me. Um, plus, it's also tech. Tech, de tech trades are very powerful. It's one thing I don't love about, about these things. Looks like we got another freighter. I don't know where this freighter came from. Oh, trade licensing. So I think it would be good. So who's who's going to be my friend? That's the real question. Can I actually even go through these slipstreams? Is that a thing I can do? Oh, it is. So I'm going to send some freighters to uh, the, the guys in the other system because I want to make friends with them um, totally. So the guys who are in the other system, I forget who it is that wants to be my friend. The Luxar Dominion. It's one of these guys. Let me check the diplomacy screen again. Um, yeah, it was the Luxar Dominion I wanted to be friends with. The Iconian Refuge is feeling a bit better. Me. Yeah, I want to be friends with the Manti Cluster and the Luxar Dominion. Basically, to simplify what I'm doing here, I'm going to dominate my own solar system, galaxy cluster, and trade and be friendly with the other one. That's kind of like the goal. It's like, if you're my neighbor, I'm not going to be a good neighbor. But if you live down the street, we, we can party. Let's go ahead and attack this sniper. This should be a total obliteration for them when we get around to it. More treasure hunts completing that are refilling our coffers. We also got pl planetary soil upgrades. Our planets are going to be upgradable. Uh, there's the fusion power plant. We were looking for that, so I'll take the fusion power plant. Let's kill this. Uh, but let's do a quick battle. Should be easily calculated. Um, we will get another experience point. We want to take out this pirate shipyard. It is a little bit harder. There's a small chance we lose a ship here. 
Um, but I just don't think it's tough enough to really do much. I think we're strong enough now with cruisers. Um, yeah, we'll take no casualties. Plus, we're leveling up, which is amazing. So let's quick battle that. We might. I think this is a battle where we will take some damage, though. Um, we were victorious. Let's show the battle log. So my cruisers fired off a volley of missile attacks. Then they closed to beam range. Uh, beam started firing. And it looks like we hit a pretty damn good amount of damage here. And the shipyard didn't really fire back until we got within missile range. It looks like our missiles like heavily outranged them. Because like when I look at the, the shipyard firing back, like it did like zero damage here. It did zero damage here. It missed this attack. So we just obliterated. Um, and that should be another experience point. So we need another two experience points. There's a couple of monsters and stuff over here. I'm going to go ahead and go to my executive orders. We've got a ton of stuff here. 25% uh, tourism on all of our worlds. Oh, wow. There's no reason not to do this. We're going to do a galactic festival. Um, ooh, three new leaders. That's quite good. Forced overtime. Oh. This would upset people, but it would make my shipyards insane. 100 credits, 100 credits per governor would hurt their loyalty. I'm still kind of afford to wait for a free colony ship approval. Um, science telescope takeover. Yeah, I want to do a little scan over here. Yeah, it looks like here we've got a monster nest over here that we want to go fight. That's what I was looking for. So we're going to make our way over there with our fleet. We're just trying to train them up before the war. That's the goal. OK, there's the fusion power plant. This will be a nice building. It gives extra manufacturing, military research. It does increase pollution, but we don't necessarily care too much about pollution. We don't need exotic world colonization as the Yor. Let's go for kinetic weapon improvements and let's pop into Iconia. And what we want is that fusion power plant. So if we plant it here, this will be a plus six fusion power plant. It'll give plus two to this shipyard, plus two to Razar's lift as well. So that's a great spot for it right there. Um, really, really nice spot for a fusion power plant. Let's go. I'm going to prioritize the possibility engine. Let's get this nihilist off this planet. They're nihilists, Donny. So we'll deploy the seed and we will deploy the nihilist onto the seed and then we will deploy this colony ship over to here. And hopefully by the time it gets over there, we'll take out all this other stuff. So we're just waiting for the last CPU M0 and the last packet to come out of this shipyard. And then we'll want to build one more fleet from probably Zhang. Okay, let's go for the Avenger missile system. We'll do that. And Ico's fleet is awesome. You have finished your construction queue. We could do more treasure hunts. I think we would like to create a invasion fleet. So in order to do that, we want to come into Zhang. Awesome. Zhang 3 has population, which is fantastic. What am I going to build here, actually? I could just build a cultural district, but that just seems like a waste. I think the Xeno Anthropology Center is fine. Yeah. Xeno Anthropology seems totally within the realm of possibility. I guess the other thing I could go for is, where is it? It's the thing that gives you... Oh. I'm not seeing it, so I guess I'm just blind. So colonists have been reported missing on this planet. I'm going to go look for colonists on this planet, actually. Um, and the other thing is we want to build this fusion power plant. So can I just pull... And I want it adjacent to the starport. But I might just need to choose somewhere else. Can I just plonk that there? Do I have to destroy this improvement and then place it? Yeah, that's fine. So I'll prioritize the fusion power plant and then we'll get all this stuff under construction. Awesome. So that Xantium deposits asteroid factories and Thulium in exchange for fleet supply, planetary adaption and cultural outreach. Perfect. Lots of tech getting exchanged here. Uh, the Zhang-1 shipyard has completed its construction queue, like I said. Let's get ourselves a pair of transports. Well, yeah, let's get a pair of transports. We'll also get a packet and that will be 10 logistics and then we should be able to fit two cruisers in here to escort this and the, the cruisers will just keep this safe this would be more like a planetary invasion fleet rather than a sort of attacking fleet if you know what i mean all right so we'll load up some criminals onto our transports because criminals increase the crime of your planets and so you just you know you can send them off to the invasion um armor rating plus 10 percent let's have a look here zhang one so we've voice murder so we get a plus one intimidation approval and pollution a 45% chance of persuasion. So we'll see how that... There's something going on on that planet. I don't really pay attention to narrative events because it's just not how I play things. Ooh, we get plus one persuasion, plus two farming, and minus 25% manufacturing. The minus 25% manufacturing is really painful um, because that's going to translate into a big reduction in our shipyard output. I hate this. 
honestly. And I wish we had had a different outcome, but I cannot change it now, such as life. 10% armor rating has been increased. We've got anomaly detection, quality of our worlds. I'm gonna go for anomaly detection. It's time to find a bunch of new free anomalies. I wanna get rid of this infant, so I'll go fight him because he's threatening my freighters and my colony ships. I've got an idle core world over here. So what were we doing at Alva 1? I think we were looking to increase its productivity. So the fusion power plant will be good. The supply depot, all these things increase the production of military. So I think the thing to do is to get a starport either here. I think this is the place to get the starport for sure. Um, so we'll put the starport right there. We definitely want the fusion power plant to give adjacency. Yeah, for sure. So fusion power here. Maybe want to build a couple of manufacturing districts first. I mean, the production in here is okay. But I'll do a manufacturing district here. And yeah, in between these two buildings seems good. And then I guess I can put one there too. Then like a prison and surveillance center seems quite good. But this is better off being built adjacent to the capital because it gives it, you know, it would be give plus one level to this, which would be pop cap and all that sort of stuff. Prism wouldn't be bad. We will consider our options after we are finished increasing the productivity of this planet. We discover the remnants of one of our first space vessels. We can get traditionalism plus research, nihilism, or a free probe. Um, I think we'll take the traditionalism plus 5% research on all of our planets. This seems to con continue to extend our scientific advantage that we're kind of playing around. Um, they built a deep space starbase here. It's interesting. I think they were trying to get control of that Illyrium, which is, you know, that's their right if they want to do that. Anomaly detection. We get the Thulium sensor away. Oh, wow. 64 sensor power. That's insane. Uh, we would definitely want that. Starbase defense grids. Yeah, let's start building up our modules. Um, speaking of starbase vision over here. This is a mining starbase, and I would like, hmm, interesting. Perimeter scanners, if I take that sector scanners. So we've got good sensor range radius here. Next radius increases 36. Extends the starbase area of effect by two. We need more modules. That'll be something we get around to. Uh, we have our fully built fleet, although now we have more logistics. So perhaps it would be good for us to build another CPU M0 with, yeah, just a fill out this fleet because we're up to 30 logistics here and speaking of which this fleet also has 30 logistics so it could probably do with another ship or two but we'll we'll, we'll kind of cross those bridges when we come to them we'll get the quick battle get a bit of experience um, and now we should level up after the next couple of battles over here with all these monsters that are floating around orbital mining in exchange for exotic worlds i'll take that it seems fine 10% shield strength. I will take that 10% shield strength every day of the week. That is perfect. What are we doing over here? The Icos fleet is waiting for reinforcements. You guys are almost built, actually. We have just one more ship coming in here, which will bring us up to 22 logistics, meaning there's eight left. May as well put another CPU in there um, and then see if maybe we could recruit a commander. Let's see here. Before creation. Ooh, missile attack after death. This would be good for... That's a cruiser. I really want a fighter. So I'll go for the frigate. Let's go ahead and recruit. Let's see who is good. What do they scale off? This scales off diligence and resolve. This guy's got good diligence and resolve and terrible other stats. So we'll take him and we will put him in charge of the echoing void. The echoing void will be sent to go command the invasion fleet. Awesome. Let's see here. Poisoning enemy planet's environment so we can either sell it. I think I'll sell it because I'm low on cash right now um, for sure. It seems like the good move. Colonize CAF 4. Fantastic. This is 4 production, 3 science, 6 money. Um, all being fed into CA 1. 10% shield strength is complete. We can increase the research in our plants. There's one turn techs. We're just one turning techs right now, right? Um, it's the most efficient way to get through a tech tree is to take a tech in one turn. Okay, we got our constructor over here, which means we're going to be building a military starbase right here. Um, and the goal of this military starbase is to prevent worlds from being invaded. You have to kill the starbase first, which is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and produce some modules so that we can actually upgrade that starbase and also upgrade a few other starbases. Uh, looks like we're being attacked by the Khan Nest, or we're attacking the Khan Nest rather. Now, we're expecting no casualties. They're expecting a total loss. We're way stronger because our ships are starting to level up. Our combat power is really, really high compared to their combat power. So we should see a pretty good quick battle here. We could watch the battle. I'll just do quick battles. So there's the enemy nest. Um, our ships have leveled up. They are now officially, um, like if I click on this guy, he's level two, um, which is awesome. So I wish there was a way for me to see exactly. I wish there was a way for me to show you exactly how and why these ships level up. The commander ship has leveled up, which will give me some bonuses. Like, for example, I could get the slipstream accelerator, which would give me plus one ship move, which would be a 20% movement boost. Um, beam attack. I could also go for extended reinforced hull for this ship to be way tankier. This ship's tankiness isn't that important to me, but the extra plus one ship move 
is actually fantastic for the whole fleet. The fact that the whole fleet will just speed up slightly is great. Uh, let's also take out this calf fleet. We're expecting no casualties because we have extremely strong fleets. Quick battle again. Um, then we have one more move and we'll, we'll keep clearing these out faster we can get these guys leveled up. So yeah, nice. Battle log. Looks like it was a fairly straightforward, like we did a bunch of damage, then we closed to melee range essentially, and it did not do much damage in return. Civilizations with the most core worlds. I'm actually fourth on that one. I just don't have that many worlds compared to like the Festron Hunt has an insane number of worlds. Let's see, we can improve the moves of our ships. Plus one move on all of our ships seems fantastic. I'm going to take that um, because I need to make the galaxy smaller, basically, is what I'm saying here, um, so that I can get around and do the things that I need to do. We don't need to watch this battle. They're going to get a total loss. We have full health. Uh, we'll quick battle that. Our ships got slightly more experienced. And I think as a ship gains experience, it actually just gets stronger, which is fantastic. There's a heavily defended precursor anomaly. Um, it's got a level one dreadnought with 68 health. I would love to go clear that precursor anomaly. There's a slipstream accelerator giving us plus one movement. That's fantastic. It's exactly what we were looking for. Beam weapon enhancement, not so important. I wouldn't mind the production of our worlds going up. I will take the one turn tech though. Again, if you one turn attack, you're basically making the tech tree smaller every single turn. So that's the objective there. So the Zhang fleet is actually complete. And I think I will position this over here because I'm going to need to want, I'm, well, I'm going to want to invade all of these three core worlds that the Archean Empire have. Um, and this fleet is particularly well suited to it, right? It's got 104 conquest rating and then kind of decent other stats. So there was a commander ship on the way. I'm going to go ahead and loop up with that commander ship. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and send these guys over here to be near Shea Burrow. Uh, so looking at this, I'm going to produce another, another CPU. I probably will need to design a new ship eventually, but I'm kind of happy with this ship. I'll get another CPU to send it to go join this fleet over here in the West. And that'll be helpful. Okay. Bioplastics is completed. Now we're going to be two turning tech. So we got rid of all the one turn techs, which is fantastic. Um, soldiering would be great for the war. Um, larger fleets would be sick as hell actually. Plus 12, we could fit two more cruisers in there. Taking a look at this newly settled planet of K1, we actually finished all of the manufacturing stuff. We're up to 35 manufacturing here, which is a really good production line. Um, I think the thing to go for here is to get the galactic mainframe on this tile and then surround it with research districts. This will get me a pretty significant amount of science and then set me up for future sciencey stuff. So it'll take a little bit of time, but it will lead to nice things. And then I guess before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and do a, a manufacturing upgrade, which will give plus one level to all manufacturing improvements, which should be on the order of three, six, nine, 12, 17, 17% manufacturing and 1% approval, which seems quite good to me uh, before we get to work on all this sciencey stuff. All right. So the sponsor shipyard of Iconia is ready. We could do research missions but I don't think that's necessary. We're a little bit light on the old cash. Um, I think it might be good to continue to produce more of these, more CPUs. So I'll produce another two CPUs. Uh, ooh, Alva 2 has led to mutation. So I could lose manufacturing. I could lose manufacturing and pollution. Or I'll say, hey, listen, no change, right? I don't want to lose production. Production is my faction's thing. So we super do not want to lose production. All right, so we have a couple of modules in the bank. Let me pop up over here because I want to build this. Ooh. Boosts the speed of nearby ships, slows nearby enemy ships. Um, so what we really want is to make this a stronger thing. So we're going to go for the Starbase Defense System. We want to make this a real fortress that is capable of holding off um, a lot of enemy bullshit. So missile attack, range attack, armor, all those things. Because this is the thing that protects these planets from being invaded. And so it just seems logical to me that we would want that to be as powerful as possible. Oh, the first subspace stream flight. I think one of our freighters has just entered into the subspace stream or has made it through already. Yeah, he just made it through. Awesome. Uh, there's logistics and ship range. It's good. We can get further. Uh, missile weapons, manufacturing, research, orbital research center. We will eventually go for that kind of thing. Uh, let's go for a starbase defense grid, making our starbases stronger. This freighter, I think we'll send it to this capital world. Here's a real question. How many trade licenses do I have? I've got three more and I think I have two traders in the slipstream. Yeah, you're going through that slipstream. So I would want one more trader. So that's something I need to kind of slot into the back of the brain. Uh, Zhang One is ready to produce more stuff. We did just get another CPU to be sent over to these guys. Uh, we'll probably need two more CPUs or at least a transport, maybe a transport and a CPU plus 10. Um, so this would be six. That would bring us up to... 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should fit. So you make your way over there to join that fleet. This fleet, I think we go for the precursor anomaly. Yeah. Let's see how we do. 
I'm expecting no casualties, and then we're going to survey it. Awesome. The fleet was victorious. We took about 20 damage. We destroyed the enemy ship. Awesome. Perfect. No need for any more data. Um, let's go ahead and launch a transport ship. Just take any old any old crew will do. There's a, uh, a starbase defense grid. We've got the Omega defense grids. Oh, wow. Hyper silicates are required for some of these. Okay, That's interesting. Let's go for... Ooh, slipstream drive. There's plus two moves. Awesome. More moves is really good. I definitely want this starbase to be strong. Durantium, Durantium. Boosts the move for allied ships and reduces the moves of enemy ships within the area of influence. Very cool. We've got the fortification module. Increases the defense of allied ships within the area of effect. I don't think we need that. What we want is just for this thing to be strong in of itself. Yeah, we're up to 11 attack now. I think it would be good to get the barrier array. That'll give us shielding. Nice, nice, nice. We've got a plus five shield strength. Let's go for the Durantium composite as well for armor rating. That's all those modules done. Um, and that armor rating and the shield strength will just make this thing stronger. And that's our goal, is to just make this thing relatively strong to be able to hold its own. Um, it's got a decent number of modules installed. It will get more modules as the shipyard here continues to produce modules. I'll probably produce like another few. Keep that going. 10% manufacturing on all of our worlds. We analyzed a precursor artifact. Very cool. That is very nice. That's why you want to find those precursor artifacts wherever they are. We did find one, which I'm quite happy about. Um, you have another level up. Let's have a look here. Moves. I think extended reinforced hull is the right play for a capital ship. It allows you to keep them alive longer. We'll just quick battle this. Oh, we got more. We got more stuff over here. Can I do... I can't do another scan. Exploit resources. A goodwill tour... Guardian drone. Yeah, okay. Let's go check out this artifact. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's another monster shipyard over here. We'll definitely go check that out. Okay, another freighter made it through. I'm going to send this one to this planet. We just want to get good trade routes with capital worlds because that's going to be efficient. There's plus one movement. That's awesome. Another plus one move. Hell yes. Let me have a look. I want to look at my my tech navigator. Oh, yeah. We're just, we're super deep down the um, these trees. Where is, what are we researching again? Hyperdrive optimization. So where is that? That looks like a green tech. Yeah, we're researching this. Plus one move is fantastic. Intermittent suspension is logistics. Logistics. Plus two moves. Okay, so we're, we're moving down. We're getting into pretty late on some of these tech trees. Now, when it comes to like economic stuff, we haven't even touched any of the late game stuff. We're definitely focusing on ship stuff, uh, which makes sense because we're preparing for a pretty big, like all encompassing war. At least it makes sense to me. The possibility engine is almost finished. But I think I've been preparing for this war way too long, and I think I just kind of need to do the war soon. So I'm going to tell this Zhang fleet to go into sentry mode. We're not ready to actually go to war yet. Soon we will. We've got a little bit of stuff that I want to do. There's the plus one move that we were looking for. We could improve the quality of our worlds again, get some advanced extraction. We don't care about the maximum size of our fleets. Let's go ahead and start increasing our economy, because I wouldn't say that we've economically stalled. We just haven't been accelerating our economy at the pace that we should have been. Uh, so the Zhang shipyard is finished. Let's go for more of these CPUs. I think there's a fleet that could use two more. So we'll get those underway. Uh, and then this CPU will head out this general direction. So I want you to go to that fleet. I want you to go to that fleet. And I want you to go to that fleet. That should fill this guy up. You are studying these things. Two months remaining. That's fine. We can get the web weapon jammer, we can get the thulium, or we can get the money. I'll just take the money. I'm a money kind of guy. Advanced crop engineering, fantastic. Uh, the manufacturing capital could be really nice. Costs antimatter and gerantium and gives a huge manufacturing boost. Let's take it. All right, what do we got here? Ico's fleet, you're waiting for the last CPU to come out. You just chill. Manufacturing capital research has been completed. Let's go for xeno resource mining so we can increase the res resource production rate on certain things. Um, this CPU is going to go join this fleet as will the next one that will pop out there. And it looks like we got a trade offer here. So they want directed energy weapons in exchange for cultural influence. I'll accept that trade deal. Seems fine to me. Um, we managed to survey the Nanite Warship Maker. Very cool. Uh, let's go blast this fleet. Should be a quick battle. Easy clap. Experience is growing. You love to see it. We can take on the Nest next turn alongside the Asp. And then I think we're going to start redirecting to kill. Oh, maybe the reason... Is it because I don't have vision of these star bases? Is that why I can't see it? Because I know there's a star base there. That's confusing. Interesting. Inside it, sophisticated nanites are capable of assembling a powder, powerful automated warship. So we can harvest it for resources or we can command a warship. Let's command a warship. That sounds like fun. Spawn an overlord ship. Um, so what happens if I do this? It's a frigate that does what? What kind of modules we got here? Cannon, rail guns, titanium plating, Helios rockets, and a weapon jammer. So it's just like a, just a decent small ship. 
Yeah, that's fine. We'll just add it to this fleet. It'll add a little bit of combat power. I, I, I don't really like to build fleets until I have cruisers. Cruisers feel tanky enough to take some hits is the thing. Anything smaller than that does not. So there's Xeno resource mining that'll give us better resource extraction. Biomass resequencers, this leads to some better stuff, so we'll grab that. So they want to trade Hypersilicate's Warp Theory for credits. I'm going to go ahead and reject that because I'm going to kill you soon. Speaking of which, let's finally check diplomacy. How do we stand against the Archean Empire? Oh yeah, we're way stronger than them across almost every dimension. So I think it's about time we declare the war. So I'm just waiting for this last CPU to finish here and the CPU to finish here, which will happen next turn. You guys have nine moves. Let's take on the Sheraton Nest. Should be an easy quick battle. No casualties reported. Um, we'll take on the Asp as well. Another easy quick battle. No casualties reported. We've got ship upgrades available. So this is my surveyor. Um, I'm going to bring that down to the shipyard in Zhang um, to become a flagship because that's what it's been training for its whole dang uh, life. Antimatter warheads, Illyrium modules. Let's go for the extended reinforced hull because the, the hull power on this thing is crazy. We've got a 60%, 12 bait. Like, look at the health on this thing. This thing could fight a whole fleet in its own. Maybe not, but, you know, close to it. Yeah, so I want you in position to take on this starbase over here. Uh, civilizations with the most technologies. The Manti cluster actually beat me, but I would imagine they've maybe researched like cheaper text than me or something. I don't know. I was researching pretty cheap text. Like whenever I see a one-turner, I take the one-turner. One-turner and burner. One-turner, I hardly know her. Now, this fleet, this fleet's job is to go destroy the enemy's shipyards. That is the job of Ico's Fleet 3. Go to enemy shipyards and blast them. Iconia has finished what it was doing. I'm going to start producing supply ships again to feed the capital. So I'll just produce five of those. And the idea is now I can start to like actually finish my construction queue in here because the capital's production. I wouldn't say that it's stagnated, but it's definitely not going as fast as it should. Zhang, on the other hand, let's have a look at the design. So I want to make a cruiser. I would like to upgrade the CPU BM M0. I would like to edit this design as a cruiser. And I want to have a look. So what do you got? You got a titanium plating. Do we have anything better than that? No, it looks like not. You got a weapon jammer on you. You got an interstellar drive. That's great. Plus two moves. You got hull support. Hull support's fine. You got a targeting computer. Let's see, in terms of weapons, you got a neutron weapon emitter. I don't quite have the Illyrium to go hard on that. Shield generators, titanium plating. Titanium plating is really good. Armor rating, advanced shield generators, manufacturing cost, mass, beam accuracy, what do we got here? We got a railgun. Can I replace the railgun for something a little bit better? It's got a mass of five. The enhanced railgun, thulium. I do have a decent amount of thulium and I make enough to where it might be better. It's only twice as much power. Um, let's say if I got rid of the railgun, let's say hypothetically, and I added the enhanced railgun, what if I dropped the Helios rockets? I added another railgun. Combat rating eight. Helios rocket, railgun. Yeah, looks like we can't re really get the combat rating up anymore. So yeah, no real improvements. Um, no real improvements to the ship design, really. I mean, I guess I could probably add shields to it, but at this point, um, I'm just accepting shields as a weakness of my fleets. So I'm going to start building more CPUs. I don't know how many I need, but I'm going to build a bunch. Just cube five seems reasonable to me. Send these guys over to join this fleet. Let's get the surveillance system on this thing. Now it has an 11 range sensor radius and the thulium sensor array. Boom, now it's up to 16. Now this, this is sensor. Nihilism, cultural research, traditionalism, cultural. Yeah, okay. 5% gross money. Seems pretty good. Okay, these guys are in position. You're supposed to go join them. 10% missile attack, plus one missile attack. Awesome. Uh, resequence our stations will allow us to increase the quality of our worlds. It's amazing. Increasing the quality of your world seems like a pretty damn good objective. We are going to need... Now, Alva, this is an interesting thing because what we want is to make some defenders. So some really cheap like fight the enemy ships so this is a fighter it's yeah this is a great ship for defending so we'll just pick like one two three four five of those to defend these planets um that'll keep them busy also this thing needs to be upgraded even more um perimeter scanners is good sector scanners as well so slowly building up like the reach and range of this and then go back to producing modules after you've built the actual planetary defenders supply ships will be fed into the capital to shave turns off of Iconia. I don't understand why these citizens are so expensive. I'm like taking like 10 turns or something. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. 0 0.1 control per month isn't bad. We could actually create more colonies. Dianova 2 and Dianova 4. Um, I guess let's have a look. Who's good? Let's go ahead and trigger the executive order to recruit leaders. 
boom. And then we'll go in here and someone with really good stats, I think, is the play. Oh, we can get a... He's a good diplomat, so let's recruit him. Good diplomat. Uh, we'll put him in charge of the Manti Cluster. We're going to be going to war with the Festron Hunt at some point. It's inevitable because their happiness with us is going down. This guy seems like a good governor. I'll put him in charge of Dianova. Um, he doesn't improve morale or much like that, but he just seems pretty good. All right. So, Dianova, this one. No, this one. Not a particularly huge planet. Looks like it's actually well geared towards money. And we could use a couple of money worlds. So let's see here. We got manufacturing up here. We got food, a little bit of food here, some wealth over here, a little bit of research. We have epithemius pollen again, which make us more wealthy. Uh, we got a population zone here, restorative herbs. So I'm going to drop the core world right there. That'll get us 15% income and a plus one pop cap, which seems quite good. We are probably not going to be going for a starport or anything like that. Let's focus on getting like colonial generators, supply depots, fusion power plants. Those things seem fine. And I could build these up in this northern area because there's a plus three manufacturing. Um, so plus 5% manufacturing. That'll be a 15% boost and plus two base manufacturing. We'll also go for the supply depot. And then we'll do the fusion power plant. And then these three things together, cooperating, that should be enough to get this planet sort of off the ground. We do need like fleets and stuff protecting this, but this should get us to a certain point where we can start to build a little bit of wealth in here. All right, resequencer stations are done. Increase the maximum size of our fleets. Improve research capability, seems quite good. Power of beam weapons, let's go for that. Um, I like the idea of having better beam weapons. I think we declare the war now. No, we declare it. Not next turn, but the turn after next. Um, I am going to take minus 10 relations with the Iconians and plus 3 intimidation. I'm totally fine with that. There's Virgil's starbase. Interesting. We definitely want to take out that starbase and start building some of our own. So a combination of supply ships and constructors is probably in order. This planet is now protected. Although, for some reason, these guys hate our culture because they're traditionalists. That's fine. You're allowed to hate the culture. Um, that is your right as a citizen of the Yor Empire. Um, but at least the planet is protected, right? We have a ship in or orbit. And honestly, if we have a ship in orbit, do we really need more than one? Like, because the shipyard itself, uh, or rather the starbase itself is protecting. So we just need modules to be built so that we can continue to upgrade our starbases. Um, you step back a tile. Plasma beams, plasma pods, enhanced plasma pods. Awesome, that's better weapons. Let's go for precursor archaeology. This will allow us to do more relic-based stuff. Um, when it comes to prestige victory, we're actually in a great spot. Uh, the top opponent is 26% and we're at 30% prestige towards the victory, which is awesome. Means we're doing well. I'm really, really enjoying this kind of foray into Gal Civ 4. Store the armor module in our vault to keep it for future or sell the armor module. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep it. Let's find out what it does. It's the armor plate module. Oh, in increased armor defense for a target ship. Let's put that onto our survey ship here. Boom. And then also you leveled up. Let's get you an antimatter warhead. More damage, hopefully. Okay, time to declare the war. Precursor archaeology is completed. Let's go for the Phoenix missile system. That's going to be a 10% missile attack boost as well as a harpoon salvo, all these sorts of cool things. Uh, let's talk to the Archean Empire. Archaea, we speak to you. Uh, the time has come to destroy you. Yeah, you heard me. War it is. You know, military power. We have almost twice their military power. We have almost twice their faction power. We have almost twice their science. We have almost twice their manufacturing. Similar amounts of money. We're way more scientific than them. We have pretty good sector ownership. Similar population, not quite as good galactic challenges. Um, but I think that does mean that my leader has been deassigned from dip diplomacy. So I'm going to put him in charge of the Festron Hunt um, to try and like keep them from declaring war on me. And let us begin the war in earnest. We've got a fleet right here. We want to take on this starbase and we're probably going to want to build another starbase. So let's get ourselves a constructor in here soon. And then some more supply ships to keep flowing production into like feeding production back into Iconia. We're finally getting the think tank up. That thing has been we've been waiting on this for a long time. This is a 20% tech boost and the technology is the base that gets multiplied. So this is a really, really nice thing for us to get. And also we have so many ways that we can increase this planet's capability of like holding more stuff. So lots of options to continue to extend the power of this planet. All right, let's find this ship over here. We've got the infant. And we've got this deep space starbase we want to take out. Because we want to, we want to get control of this ascension crystal ourselves. Um, speaking of which, in Zhang, why don't in Zhang, why don't you make me another constructor to go claim this crystal for ourselves? You were heading to go join this guy. 
there's also a little bit of nonsense over here. We need to take out this base, star base. It's all going to be coming down the line. We're working on it. It'll happen. So the planet of Shea will be invaded soon. You want to take out this star base. Can't quite reach it. That's fine. Phoenix missile system. There's the 10% missile attack we were looking for. Beam weapon attack up. Awesome. Just keep improving our military, making it impossible for anyone to deal with us. Total loss from them. Let's do a quick battle. Take out this life relic that they have. Um, and that should actually cripple their their influence in this area. We'll also take out this spotter. Killing any and all of their infrastructure and fleets will just make the war go easier for us. So we've taken out this sector. Um, let's send this fleet now to begin the battle over the Archean homeworlds. This fleet here, you're going to take on this little bug. Do a quick battle, get that little bit of experience. You know, we're up to 400 health here, by the way. There's like all these ships leveling up, 421 health. We take on the shipyard. Awesome. Um, good job on that front. Now I want you to go take on this shipyard over here, or rather the starport. Not starport, it's a star base. Let's send the constructor over to there. And this constructor is going over to collect this life relic, I think. Unless this thing can hit it. If I get extends the area of effect, can you... Oh, you might be able to get that life relic, actually. Yes, and then I just need to get the Zeno Archaeology Lab because now the range of this thing is actually within reach of the life relic. So this constructor is kind of excessive, but I guess we could go get more antimatter. On the other hand, we could build an economic starbase here. So we have a military one. So why not build a economic starbase that is meant to improve my planets nearby? So economic starbase goes down and that'll give a 5% manufacturing and income boost. And we can start to also build this up with more modules. So starting to really build infrastructure. I would also like a, another starbase on this side of the planet built for influence. I think that would be kind of fun and exciting. So speaking of that, let's get another constructor in here. We do have population for that, right? Yeah, we have a nihilist that we can put on that. So the invasion of Shea Beryl has gone on, uh, or is happening rather. So they've got defending citizens, zero months remaining. Invasion of a colony will always take at least two months and can never take longer than 10 months. Our first invasion has been completed. Uh, we got forged beam weapons, awesome. Energy shields are going to be coming online too, so let's go ahead and improve our shielding. Uh, so we have conquered Shea Burl. We have a Shea Burl shipyard. I think we want to blast that. Let's take this on. This will, this will prevent him from building reinforcements, which just puts us further into a more advantageous position in this war. Uh, the Zhang Fleet 5 is going to be um, the goal. We might take some light casualties here attacking Shea Burl. So let's see what happens. We're up against... A couple of Koshes, which look weak enough for us to take them on. So let's do a quick battle. We had 42 logistics. I'm expecting to take damage. I was hoping that we won't take casualties. Yeah, we just took some damage, like casualties. Um, we'll take a month to conquer this planet. Awesome. The invasion is beginning. Um, actually, the, the invasion happened. It is now our planet. So Agena will be next. Um, so we've already invaded two of the worlds that they had. We will want to, you know, eventually turn these into actual, you know, what you call it, uh, colonies. But that'll be a process. We have finished in Alva 1. I think we finished the manufacturing sector. So we brought the production up to 20 per turn, which is great. Let's scan the planet. And I don't really know what I want to do here. There's no tech input here, which is not great. Very low manufacturing in Alva 1. So it's just not a very good planet, which means maybe it would be better off um, as like an influence generator of some kind. I mean, we could build a little bit of research here, but I don't think it would be worth it. I think we're better off focusing on, like it doesn't even have good influence growth actually, it has no cultural input. So maybe the thing to do here is, um, yeah, I don't know actually. It's definitely, it's just not a very good planet. It's the reality of the situation. So we should set it up. Let's see, you're an entrepreneur, citizen, worker, in prison, train as a scientist, train as an entertainer. We hate our culture. Okay, you hate your culture, that's fine. Maybe train as workers. I mean, honestly, is it that big of a deal if we just completely like push this planet towards being like a total manufacturing world and just make as many factories as possible? I guess I could justify like a couple of housing districts here. Let's see. So what are you? You are a military improvement, but you give bonuses to population. Well, like if I built a housing district here, this would be worth 1.2 pop. And then if I put another housing district here, this would be worth 1 point so much pop. So this would get me a lot of population room which might be good for this planet to have a little population room. I don't know. I think we'll just, this is how I want to develop the planet. Um, let's cancel these. 
All right, let's focus on filling out those pops, getting the production up. You know what? Building population is a really inefficient way to get production, actually, because they don't provide much. But we will want a lot more pops. So instead, what I'm going to do is at the edges of our manufacturing zones. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna spam out manufacturing districts. Let's just, let's go crazy. Let's go ham on production here. All right, it'll take a while, but that should give us a significant production boost. What we can also do is actually upgrade the planet itself. So we get a space elevator. There's plus one minerals. That's huge, actually. And then we can also give plus one mineral to Alva too. Um, space elevator in there. And now we're up to 27.9 production which is way better scaling than the 20 we were on. What else would we like here? So defense matrix, recruiting station, that's growth, growth, orbital prison that lowers crime, atmospheric cleanser, sensor array. We don't care about sensor array. Influence growth. Do we care about influence? We are right on the border with the Festron hunt. I think this is better off as a manufacturing area. A little bit of base wealth might not be terrible to help sustain my economy. Or maybe influence to fight back against the Festron Hunt influence, that could be good. I think maybe the orbital markets are the thing to go for here. Planetary beacons. Do I want that influence growth? Is the influence growth worth it? You know what, let's go for the influence growth. Planetary beacon seems fine. They're relatively cheap. Um, and then I guess I will go for the orbital market just to get a little bit more money out of this planet. It's a very, very slight increase. But with this little bit of influence, It'll help slightly. We have slightly, we have slightly, we've slightly upgraded the base inputs of these worlds, which is good. That's what we want. Okay, so I want this to be my influence starbase on this side of the star. You will be a communication starbase, and this thing will give influence growth and 10% influence growth. So if I go into this world now, you can see here the influence is increased by the ICOS starbase. So the cultural input will be nice. And we will want to develop this a little bit as time goes on. I'll take the Durantium and Helios ore, because I don't have any Helios ore. I don't need the free constructor. But man, am I having a great time playing Galsiv 4. So we got better shields. That's kind of cool. Better missiles seems really good. I'll take that. Again, we're really, really hyper-focused on fighting wars right now. Plus two loyalty. Totalitarian cultural alliance. Yeah, I like the idea of focusing on totalitarianism. We are culturally progressed enough to where we could unlock a thing. So we unlocked the possibility engine planetary improvement. We could just get a thousand research right now. Um, totalitarianism. Hundred control. Prestige. Unrest has reduced all core worlds. Citizen expectations lowered. Ooh, spawns to support ship the enforcer. Secret police. Factions have no negative side effects. Grants f five free transports. I don't think we're going to go for pacifism. So I feel like collectivism and individualism are opposites. Progressivism and traditionalism are opposites. Totalitarianism and pacifism are opposite. And so maybe egalitarianism would be good. 10% so approval on all worlds. Three free colony ships. I don't know if I need that. Core worlds will start with 100 influence plus 5 influence per turn. All worlds over 50% approval get influence. Unlocks the union center. Every citizen with the egalitarian gets more all cultural. Outputs. This is definitely culturally focused. What does pacifism do? What about nihilism? Three free supply ships and 10% income on all worlds. This is more like money. Uh, maybe collectivism could be good for us. 100% homeworld influence. Citizen expectations are reduced by 50%. Extra logistics. Ooh, bigger fleets is kind of cool. Plus one fertility to all worlds. Spawns the support ships to the negotiator. Unlocks the mass mobilization. Ma max manufacturing while at war. That seems good. Uh, five population happiness for every connected system. And plus 10% to influence growth. All right. Minor worlds in our influence provide three extra resources to their sponsor world. Uh, you, this seems amazing. Let's start going down the collectivism path. So 100% home world influence will mean the borders will grow a little bit quicker. That's amazing. So if we come back to the home world, I don't really understand the influence system. I just know if I hover over tile, I have influence. <laughs> and like, that's about it. I haven't really thought about it beyond that. All right, so we've got some Archean fleets near the capital. There's the missile attack. Let's choose a new tech. Uh, research capabilities for sure. Let's go for that. So where are my fleets? This is my fleet here. I want to take on this Athol fleet. Looks like we'll take light casualties. They'll have a total loss. Um, should be fairly straightforward for us. We massively outpower them. 24 to 11 and 300 to 61. Quick battle. They will suffer. Uh, they have a second fleet. Surprisingly, I don't know why they didn't conjoin these two fleets together, but you know, that is their right to mess up their strategic plans if they want. We did lose the we did lose a ship here. I don't know what we lost. We lost something small, probably the invasion ship. Yeah, it looks like it was the invasion ship. Um, this is a way I can check. So we didn't lose anything here. Yeah, we lost the siege ship, which is fine. Siege ships, not super important. Let's have a look. Population not changing on Zhang. We got a lot of production here. We got our nice influence boost. When I say influence boost, like we built a little influence sector. 
which is actually giving us a really significant influence increase. So we've got the governor's mansion, we've got the core world capital, the bureaucratic offices that gives population and military, trade network, shark tank, innovation complex, one per planet. Wouldn't mind the innovation complex, just like plop it down somewhere. Okay, Alva 1 is good fortification module harpoon silo i'm actually quite happy with this i don't need to upgrade the starbase um, i will continue to produce modules here though because that has been a nice thing to have a lot of like options when i'm choosing what i want to do with my starbases looks like we've unlocked a prototype tip tip ship design which is kind of interesting supply ships are still feeding the capital um there's a nice little influence thing here i definitely want the cultural awareness centers to try to improve the yeah 45 percent influence growth is fantastic plus three influence growth as well um that'll just make this whole area just way more efficient for influence generation. Uh, looks like, oh, we're attacking a planet. Let's quick battle here. Should be no losses for us. Uh, looks like we have a shipyard too that we want to take on. Um, let's take on the shipyard because we can prevent them from making reinforcements. Fantastic. Let's have a look here. Can we take this on? This should be a pretty easy fleet for us to defeat as well. So they're having a bad time. We are potentially losing some ships here, but that's okay. Remember, all of our ships are also leveling up all these battles that we're doing. And we were victorious in every single one of those fights and we can begin the invasion. It'll take two months to invade this planet, but that's fine. So constructor over here, let's step you one tile this way. There we go. So now we've got control of the Ascension Crystal and the Illyrium here. We can set this up. Orbital Research Lab, Orbital Research Center. We've got the Stellar Marines, Precursor Studies. Let's go for Precursor Studies. We'll go ahead and create this. I guess a mining starbase feels right here. Kind of exciting that we got our very first Illyrium mine this late into the game. So we want the Xeno Archaeology Lab so we can start getting Ascension. I don't know what exactly Ascension does. I think it's part of a victory condition. Um, basically, it's like if you want to win the prestige victory, it's like something you can do. I actually, I don't really know what the victory conditions in this game look like. I just know that they kind of exist. Um, oh, there's a heavily de defended precursor anomaly here. We'd love to go check that out. Need more modules. I'm, I'm lacking on modules. Uh, let's have a look. I do think that this game has like too many like resources i maybe this should be grouped up differently like diplomatic capital and food and maybe like bracket these off differently like here's the basic strategics and here's the advanced strategics like a little bit more it just feels a little bit clustered without like little border breaks and i'm like oh what are all these it just takes it, it feels not clustered but like a little bit cluttered and like it takes a little bit of time to read it okay supply ship go feed that planet all right we'll take on this conveyor quick battle easy they got a bunch of ships. I one thing I also don't like is the fact that there's just like a lot of really small little ships like floating around the galaxy, and you have to like hunt them down. Um, that's mildly annoying to me. Whether or not they have an impact, it's just like maybe there should be some restriction or some reason you don't want to have all your ships split up. Uh, you know, maybe you need commanders to have a battle fleet, right? Like, cause like all these, they're just converging over here in a big mass, right? Individually. Galactic military score. I am the top military in the galaxy, which makes sense, right? We've conquered three planets from the Archeans and yeah, let's keep going for the old precursor archeology span stuff. These guys have done their job. This starbase will eventually have to get, be gotten rid of. You have a huge decay, probably would be good. For me to set up a governor for like a Gina. Oh my god, it's a size 34 amazing planet. Let's do a Gina. We're gonna assign a governor here. Oh, I'm out of money. Alright, we'll have to figure that out. So this is one of my best invader ships. Um, oh, we gotta take on this stuff over here too. Ancient study center. Sure, let's go for more ascension. And what are you doing? I think you need to start killing like these hussars and then make your way sort of generally in the direction of enemy worlds. I'll go ahead and do a little quick battle right there. Oh, flagship leveled up. A Durantium Forge. Hell yeah. Plus two kinetic attack. Boom. Very nice. The Echoing Void just became quite a bit stronger. Uh, so what's going on over here? What do we got? We got a probe. We should kill the probe. It's worth an experience on all these ships, which makes it worth it to kill. Um, oh, what is this? We got some space monsters we can kill too. Absolutely, flippin' lootly, we will kill those space monsters. So we've taken out this Star Wars. We, we should probably take out the nest over here too. It's going to be causing us problems. Plus, I think these guys are now inside my influence, which means they should be feet. They're doing something to the capital. I don't know exactly. How do I talk to them? Resource inputs. Is in our speed of experience instance is trading our resource outputs with us. So is it giving, how, can I choose? Can I choose who it sponsors? Or maybe that's trade. Maybe these are trade routes that are going out. I'm not sure. Maybe they are trade routes. Um, but this is cool. We've got like a little minor planet in our empire. We could probably theoretically invade them. I mean, I don't really know why we would want these guys inside our borders, but they're there. 
Precursor Drive, Harvest It. I think we take the Precursor Drive. That could be kind of interesting to play around with some specialized modules on those events. And we just keep hunting down all these little fleets they're sending out. They got a little seed ship. Looks like they're going to try and invade these planets. Really should have had a constructor, maybe. Um, build a star brace to protect the zone. If they conquer these, we could just, you know, we can deal with this. All right, what are you doing? You were looking for my flagship. Go join the flagship. This is my auto-surveying Gigachad flagship. Nice, we found Precursor Nanites with Xeno Archaeology Institutes. That's going to give us even more relic stuff. We could choose two new technology. Um, extra logistics seems quite good. Better research seems quite good too. Looks like this planet is being invaded. They've got two months to succeed. Or rather, they will succeed in two months. So we can go ahead and attack them and clear that off. The great thing about an invasion fleet, it can also be used to defend the things that your, your gains, if you know what I mean. My gains. So looking at this world... There's some cool stuff we could do in here. This is the capital, so we have a lot of science in here. The Shadow Temple would give us diplomatic capital and influence. I don't know if I care that much about that. We've got the Beacon of Babylon. We could do like a lot of influence growth here if we wanted to. It would only take three turns. Well, it'll take nine turns, really. Uh, why not get a little bit of influence here? Why not? It seems decent. Um, so I don't know how tourism works. 5% tourism, owned galaxy tile bonus. Ah, tourism income gets applied to your income. So this 3.2. Okay, so it goes down here to my income. Okay, so tourism isn't that bad if you can get it built up quite well. Um, speaking of stuff, we want a minister of health. Stats are bad for that. We got good blue stats. Minister of finance, let's grab you. Welcome to the cabinet. You're my new minister of finance. You're going to lower our maintenance and increase our gross income. Um, this shipyard really needs to do like a whole bunch of treasure hunts to refill our coffers because we've completely obliterated our income. We've got modules. We've got the Xeno Archaeology Institute. We're up to six ascension per month. No. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. But we're finally getting an ascension score, which is kind of neat. So this is the Iconia shipyard. Let's keep making those supply ships. We want to build up the capital. We spent a lot of time building up our military. And so now I want to actually build up the capital mainframe production, shave a few turns off buildings. So this is a planet that I had decided to build a lot of science on. We're up to a really good science number. I think I would like to do a soil upgrade here and then fill this with science. So we shall continue to do this. <gasps> I accidentally destroyed this thing. It's okay. I have another one. We can put a research thing in the center there. Or what's this? Innovation complex. Oh, well. Delete that, put an innovation complex in the center. That'll provide a lot of adjacency, plus 10 in there. Then we can also get like research level ups. That seems quite based. Based and 4x pilled. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. Yes, I think a fusion power plant on this tile would be appropriate. Yes, so I'm going to delete this improvement, get the fusion power plant, put the fusion power plant to the front of the queue because it's the most important thing. Designing planets is just a really fun, interesting process. We've got a little bit of battle over here. We'll take them on. And then this fleet can finally like stop faffing about in the western half of the world. Although I could go blow up this. We might not. But yeah, we're going to keep up the progress here. Oh, I leveled up. What do you got here? The YSS Endless Zeros could get an Illyrium cell. Let's do it. And... Mission accomplished. We've cleared out the Archean Empire from the left side of the galaxy, with the exception of this little thing. So we're going to send this guy over to participate in the main invasion of the Archean Empire. Oh yeah, look at these fleets just flowing through. Now they are individual ships, so they should be easy for me to clean up. It's just annoying. Uh, 193. We will declare war on the Luxar Dominion. No, we are not going to war with anyone. Uh, ooh, relic benefits. So I'll take that. Uh, we definitely need the Xeno Archaeology Lab here because there is this life relic. Hopefully that actually activates it. Yeah, Xeno Archaeology module. So we'll have the life relic in our belt now, which is exciting. Uh, Idle Core World. This is the world of Zhang 1. Now we can totally make this planet more efficient and bigger, stronger, better, faster. Uh, we've got a starport here. I think I would like to move the fusion power plant over to here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the Ultra Terraformer. Boom. And then we'll come back to investigate that planet. Supply ship into the capital. Boom. Beacon of Babylon. Another turn taken off. They want money. I don't have a Mesantium deposit. Sorry. We're just going to have to deal with the fact that you don't like us. So it looks like this fleet does not have enough conquest waiting to actually destroy um, any of the Archean planets, which is fine because we will just wait for fleets that do have that capability. Oh, I didn't mean to watch this battle. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this poor ship. This poor ship. It tried to shoot us, but it looks like our evasion ability to defeat missiles is quite good. 
Oh, he got a, well, he, he got an attack off, but he missed. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Health is just, he's good. He's dead. He's, he's officially dead. He did no damage to us. Uh, Athol Starbase one. We want to blast it. Let's go. We got a little battle here. Do a little quick, quick fight. A little, another little, they're throwing their ships at us one by one, which I'm fine with. Cause that means I'm getting free experience. I'm winning battles. Oh, we got our first precursor relic. Awesome. Um, are you blowing up this station? No, you're just hanging out. A little bit of money. We're refilling the coffers. Precursor relic study Xeno computational theory. I'll take that 5% global research boost. Um, so we actually, I think we now own this relic and it's providing us a 20% growth bonus, but I don't know what that does for the ore considering we don't grow population. Uh, let's take on the Dragoon. Now your ships can do beam volleys to like attack far away. Uh, the command ship leveled up. Illyrium cells, yeah. More damage, more better. And uh, our main goal now is to destroy the infrastructure of war that our enemies have. So like take out their star bases, take out their take out their star bases, take out their colony ships, take out their you know shipyards, all that stuff. Force them into a position where war is very costly for them. So quick battle here seems good. Um, we'll do the same again. And now this is one of my fleets that's actually capable of invading worlds. So I'm going to go ahead and send him over to B Min. Bean, Beamim, Beamin 3. This fleet is also somewhat capable of invading planets, so we want to get them nice and close to the front line. Okay, yeah, this was actually a money planet, wasn't it? Yeah, we were going to make a bunch of money here. Uh, but it looks like, actually, do we need it to be a money planet still? I mean, money is still, its, I mean, this is just generally a good planet. So maybe we shouldn't specialize it to money and we should just specialize it to make lots of everything. Because manufacturing is really good in here. Science, base science is super good in here. See, what can we do on the wealth front? Bureaucratic offices, manufacturing capital, surveillance center. I think the trade network feels good to me. On top of the shark tank and then the governor's manor for the loyalty would be nice. Hell yeah. And then I suppose we'll build the galactic mainframe for a little bit of science. So this will keep this busy for a while. The shark tank will take a while. Uh, maybe we should build a shipyard so we can feed some of this manufacturing production into a shipyard that'll feed back into the planet. Seems like a, a not so bad move. So Alva, I'm gonna build a few supply ships over in Alva. This planet needs a little bit of sponsorship income to get it boosting along, which is what we want. We also wanna in in increase the level of our manufacturing. So getting all that going. This is gonna be a really productive planet when we're done with it. Plus 90 treasury, 5% science, maximum size of our fleets, shield enhancements, 10% shield strength. Thank you very much. I will take that deal. Dianova Two, we'll build a couple of supply ships, five to be exact. And then we actually want to go into Dianova and place the starport. Now, I think I'm going to delete the supply depot so I can put the starport there and then I'll rebuild the supply depot here just so I can get the star, like the starport really, really upgraded. Yeah, this feels good to me. It'll hurt the production, but it'll give us so much more supply. Um, that supply can then be fed back into the planet via supply ships. It definitely feels like supply ships are super meta. Just the ability to move production around seems quite good. Oh, we stole a colony ship. Well, well, well. Go auto-colonize a random planet for me like I give a damn. Um, don't care what you do. Let's kill this shipyard. Should be a total loss for them. We should take no casualties. We'll also take out the defenders of this planet. Total loss, no casualties. These are the kind of battles we want to be taking. I need you to get to the planet of Archaea. And you need to get over here to see if you can't continue to break these worlds. Uh, you know, I, I think here is a pretty good spot to stop off here, right? We're on the verge of finishing a war. We've managed to massively increase our tech, our production, our stuff. We're up to a 38% prestige victory progress. Um, very interesting game. Galsiv 4, worth checking out so far, I would say. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.